Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 270 by Senator Padilla, an act relating to solid waste and making appropriation therefore. Senator Padilla. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, I know uh, uh, we're all familiar with uh, the subject matter of this bill as it's been uh, debated and discussed for years uh, in uh, both houses of the legislature. But as a reminder and yeah. for context, uh, this bill, SB 270, uh, would seek to phase out single-use plastic bags in the state of California. Uh, why? Each year, more than 14 billion single-use plastic bags are handed out by retailers throughout the state. And despite our best efforts, CalRecycle tells us that less than 3% of these bags are actually recycled. Uh, plastic bags are harmful to the environment, uh, and they are a blight in a lot of our communities, and it takes a toll on the budgets of so many cities and counties as we desperately try not just to uh, collect uh, and, and uh, dispose of plastic bags, but even try to recycle those. In fact, California spends more than $25 million a year in those efforts. This bill would phase out single-use plastic bags in the state, establish a certification process for reusable bags, would require a 10 cent fee on recycled paper bags and on reusable bags made available at a checkout by a store. And the bill, uh, unlike a version debated on this floor last year, would provide competitive financing for the conversion to reusable bag manufacturing uh, for companies in California that wish to partake on the condition that the workers at those companies are retrained and retained. The concern about potential job loss was, the one, was one that was significant in last year's debate. I'd also emphasize, colleagues, that recent amendments taken to this bill clarify that any monies collected by stores for reusable grocery or paper bags may only be used for, number one, costs to implement to comply with this bill, two, the actual cost of providing the reusable or paper bags, or three, costs associated with any educational materials or education campaigns to encourage recycling and the reuse of reusable bags. Colleagues, in the years, Members and folks in the back, this is an important measure. Got a lot of attention. Please give Senator Padilla your full attention. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. Colleagues, in the years that the legislature has debated this measure, over 100 cities and counties have adopted laws at the local level banning single-use plastic bags. And on the one hand, I would argue that the plastic bag issue, their adversarial impact on our communities, on our government budgets, really is statewide, warranting a statewide solution. I can also tell you that the benefit of those ordinances that have been adopted at the local level over the years gives us evidence that this policy works. This is not a bill before us that we hope, if signed into law, might make a difference. We can look at cities from San Francisco to San Jose to Los Angeles and beyond to know that it is actually making a difference. It is working as intended. Uh, there is a broad coalition of support for this measure, not just environmental advocacy organizations, but the business community, the organized labor community, and uh, dozens upon dozens of local cities and some counties that have lent their support to this measure. Uh, I want to take a moment to say thank you to uh, pro tem elect Senator Kevin De Leon and our colleague Senator Lara, who, after having passionately argued last year on this issue, after passionately having uh, stated their position and their concern about potential job loss, potential with this bill, worked with me and my office to craft elements of this bill to address those concerns. They have joined as joint authors on this bill, and I thank them for their cooperation, making the bill even better, and for their support 
in getting the bill to this stage. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you very much, Senator Padilla. Is there debate or discussion on the matter? Debate or discussion on the matter? Senator Gaines. Yes, thank you, Mr. President and members. I, uh, with all due respect to author, uh, rise in opposition uh, to this bill. And um, this is a local issue. It's not a state issue. It's not a one size fits all that doesn't work in many of our districts. I represent 11 counties. Many of them are rural and we're basically implementing a tax, a 10 cent charge per bag on our constituents. And it's actually a profit center for grocers because the cost of the bag is two to three cents, but the charge is gonna be 10 cents. And I find that quite frankly outrageous. Included uh, and in addition to this is there's a proposal for gas taxes to go up next year as a result of AB 32. And we continue to attack the middle class in California. Jobs are gonna be lost as a result of this legislation. The estimates are as high as 2,500 jobs, which is completely reverse of what we've been trying to do in terms of job creation, particularly for the middle class here in California. And what's really ironic about this is that this is a job loss as a result of government action. So it's not competition within the marketplace of letting the, you know, the, the best product win or letting the best um, shopping bag win. Uh, this is government action mandated statewide. And when we take a look at the jurisdictions that already have the bag laws, they're in parts of the state of California that where the local community is making that decision. And I, I don't deny their uh, freedom to do that within their communities. In fact, Truckee, which is in my uh, Senate district, does have the charge for a paper bag. But we don't need the entire state uh, the, by the dictates of government determining what we can do. It's not good for the struggling middle class, which has seen a reduction in income in the last five years of about $4,100 a year. I urge a no vote. Thank you very much, Senator Gaines. Senator DeLeon. Thank you very much, Mr. Pro Tem. Uh, uh, colleagues, if you can recall, sometime last year, we had a very spirited debate here on this issue of single-use uh, uh, plastic bags. Uh, it was a very good debate. It was a spirited debate. Uh, obviously, that measure at that time uh, failed to leave this floor. Uh, nonetheless, the author of the measure, Senator Alex Padilla, uh, Ricardo Lara, uh, myself, and others uh, worked vigorously to find a compromise for the vexing issue uh, that we face, that our rivers face, that our parks face, that our freeways face, as well as our coastal line. And that is how can we find a win-win-win situation? A win for the environment by dealing with the scourge of single-use plastic bags, because the reality is still, we spend tens of millions of dollars statewide in cleanup of these single-use plastic bags. A win situation for the employees, California employees, not employees from Guangzhou, China, not employees from other states, but rather California employees, workers who work in the manufacturing sites here on site in the state of California. How can we mitigate potential job losses? And obviously, a win for California businesses in terms of expanding the economy by potentially adding jobs. There has been some fundamental changes to this measure. And with the author, Senator Alex Padilla, Ricardo Lara, and myself, over the course of the fall of last year, we worked together vigorously with all the stakeholders, with environmental groups, with labor, with businesses and employees to try to find a compromise that's a win-win-win situation. And I think SB 270 combines the best efforts of the fall negotiations. Again, we have a win for our environment 
We have a win for California businesses, employees more specifically, and just as importantly because we have resources from a recycling fund for retraining and retooling machinery, we found something that was quite innovative. The fact is, on an annual basis, if you drive by the 101 freeway, by Salinas, California, or by Watsonville, down the 101 freeway near Ventura County and Oxnard, or south on the five freeway, we see all these agricultural fields, strawberry fields, and we see the black plastic film. 110,000 tons of this black agricultural plastic film ends up in our landfills on an annual basis. That's roughly about 22 million pounds of black plastic film. And innovation has come through from the negotiations. We actually have a business, a company in Southern California that is going to secure or all of that black plastic film and recycle it into multi-use plastic bags with a minimum shelf life of 110 uses. So we captured the black plastic film, number one, so it doesn't end up permanently in our landfills. Number two, we recycle that plastic content and we sell it into the market. It becomes a win-win situation. I think this measure proves that having a cleaner environment and expanding the economy are not mutually exclusive, nor are they incompatible, but in fact, they are inclusive and very compatible for the environment and for workers. And for those reasons, you know, uh, colleagues and Mr. President, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you, Senator DeLeon. Further debate or discussion on the matter? Further debate or discussion? Okay. Senator Fuller. Mr. President and members, I rise today to oppose this measure. The outright ban of, well, I can't say one-time plastic bags because in my area they're not one time, they're a billion times, but one-time one plastic bags in your language and imposition of a fee on the paper bags is just big government taking over local agencies and local governments' responsibilities, and not in the best way. In the areas of the state where the bag problems exist, locals are acting with over 100 local entities already regulating retail consumer bags in order to address specific local concerns. A statewide ban is a solution in search of a problem. I don't see any supervisors, city or town councils, or waste haulers testifying here and calling for a statewide policy to, to, to solve their problems. All of you work with your supervisors, your city council members, and yet none of them are in evidence today. We find it necessary to impose these big government priorities. Ultimately, this should be about consumer choice. Some of us use canvas bags. I use canvas bags. You can choose to use canvas bags. But it makes sense for us, not necessarily for really large families, people with disabilities and other issues. It is not necessary for politicians to choose industry winners and losers when consumers in the marketplace should be doing that. People know what the policies are of their markets and they go there for a reason. Our state is very big. Despite the differences in problems and priorities, one size fits all big government policy is becoming more commonplace. We're crowding out the local governments and local responsibilities, and in the end, it, it's not going to do a good thing for us. While the basis of this bill is about bags, it shines a light on the continued march of government and the expanding role in our lives it stretches beyond what the locals are asking for. For these, for these reasons, I oppose this measure. Thank you, Senator Fuller. Senator Lara. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Today, I proudly join my colleague, Senator Padilla, and our pro tem elect de Leon in supporting a bill that strikes an important balance between protecting our environment and preserving local manufacturing jobs, which are very important in my district, given that I have several plastic bag manufacturers in the 33rd Senate District. Phasing out plastic bags has stirred up constructive debate about two important components key to the vitality of our communities, jobs and the environment. 
And today we agree that having a sound environmental policy does not have to come at the expense of good quality manufacturing jobs. Instead, we can have a bill that provides resources for plastic bag manufacturers to retrain their workers, re-engineer their operations, uh, to make bags meet the new environmental, uh, environmentally sound criteria prescribed in this bill. That is why I'm proud to support SB 270 that does both, provides environmental safeguards by phasing out plastic bags, making recycled bags available for a minimal fee, while also incentivizing and encouraging the use of reusable, reusable bags and keeping in place good manufacturing jobs. This bill, members, is a win for the environment, it's a win for workers, and a win for employers. I urge you to support this important measure. Thank you very much, Senator Lara. Further debate or discussion on the matter? Senator Padilla, you may close. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, appreciate the discussion. I know it's not the first time this uh, uh, issue has been debated on this floor, uh, but I do want to, just for the record, uh, respond to some of the issues and concerns that were raised by my colleagues who uh, stood up and spoke against the measure. First, the question of whether this is a local issue and should be addressed at the local level versus whether this is a state issue to be addressed at the state level. Uh, let, let me remind us that there's a couple of issues we're trying to get at here. Yes, there's a lot of chatter and focus on the adversarial impact of plastics, particularly singles plastic bags on our environment, uh, both in the oceans and on land. And that is important, but I'll remind us, especially though any of us who have served at the local government level, that one of the pressing challenges that isn't focused on often enough for cities and counties is the dwindling amount of space in our landfills. Dwindling amount of space in our landfills is driving up the cost of waste disposal. And for decades now, that particular pressing problem has driven the, uh, what used to be the Integrated Waste Management Board, now Cal Recycles, policies to address the waste stream issues through a priority order of reduce, reuse, recycle. Folks are often familiar with various recycling programs and initiatives. And of course, we're told we ought to reuse as much material uh, as possible, but the ultimate goal here is to reduce the amount of waste that we're adding to our waste stream, and I believe this measure does that. Second, the, the 10 cent fee for a, for a recycled paper reusable bag called for in the bill was referred to as a tax, and nothing could be further from the truth. The bottom line is this. The simple, elegant solution to avoid paying a 10 cent fee for a bag at a grocery store under this bill would, bring, would be to bring a reusable bag. And that's the ultimate objective of this bill, and that's exactly what we're seeing in all the cities and counties that have adopted this law at the local level. Within days of these local laws going into effect, the sky does not fall and consumers adapt, and life goes on, our community, our environment, and our government budgets benefit. Third, the alleged job loss that would happen if this mill goes forward. It's not the first time we hear it here in the state capitol. It's also an argument that was made at every city hall, every county board of supervisor, when the debates were happening at the local level. And again, the same companies that would argue job loss, job loss, we're gonna to have to you know, lay off our employees, that simply isn't happening. Fact, the companies that make single-use plastic bags within the state of California also offer other bags and products as part of their product line. Fact, the very companies that have been vocal against the phasing out of single-use plastic bags not only already manufacture reusable bags, but most are already certified in some, if not all, jurisdictions for their, their, their recycled content and reusability standard in cities like 
Los Angeles and counties like San Francisco and everywhere in between. In fact, there is a provision in this bill affording the financing for the state of California to be a partner for companies seeking to transition from the uh, manufacture of single-use plastic bags into these greener, more environmentally friendly products. California companies with California employees, the state of California is a partner to avert that potential alleged job loss. Fourth, it was raised that there are not uh, county supervisors or mayors or council members here asking for a statewide policy. I'll call your attention to the analysis of this bill that lists support and opposition. And in that support, we have Cathedral City, the cities of Clayton, Concord, Encinitas, Long Beach, Los Angeles, Palm Desert, Palo Alto, Sacramento, San Jose, San Rafael, Santa Monica, Sunnyvale, the city and county of San Francisco, city of, Long, uh, city of Oceanside Water Utilities Department, Contra Costa County, the counties of Los Angeles, Marin, San Francisco, San Mateo, Santa Barbara, Culver City, the Humboldt Waste Management Authority, the Mendocino Solid Waste Management Authority, and the Santa Clara Valley Water District. Colleagues, to me, that sounds like there's a lot of local leaders asking for a statewide policy. And last but not least, I'll end with this. Members, as uh, again, we've referenced a couple of times, this is not the first time this measure has been considered. And many wondered when I chose to take up the cause last year, why I would do so. And I did so intentionally because for far too long, this question of phasing out single-use plastic bags was seen as a coastal issue. It was about the plastic that washes up on our beaches and the impact on marine life. And those issues are very, very important. I care about the coast just as much as anybody else does. I don't have a coastal district. My district is inland. The impact of single plastic bags is just as important in inland areas as it is in coastal areas just as important in Northern California communities as it is in Southern California communities, just as important in rural areas as it is in urban areas. Colleagues, this is a California-wide problem. Before you is a California-wide solution. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you very much, Senator Padilla. For the close, uh, Secretary, please call the roll. Anderson? No. Bell? Aye. Aye. Berryhill? No. Block? Canella? No. no. Corbett? Aye. Correa? No. De Leon? Aye. Desaunier? Aye. Evans? Aye. Fuller? No. Gaines? No. Galgioni? Hancock? I Hernandez, I Hill, I Hueso, Huff, no Jackson, I Knight, no Lada, I Leno, I Ted Lou, I Carol Lou, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morell, no Nielsen, no Padilla, I Pavley, I Roth. I Steinberg, Aye. I Torres, no Vidak, no Walters, no Wolk, I Wyland, Wyland, no. Please call the absent members. Block, I Galjani, Hueso, Hueso, I. Eyes 22, no. Galjani, no. Eyes 22, nose 15, the assembly amendments are concurred in.